do take it all just a little bit for granted now, but that first time, oh, I wish I could make you realize what it's like to be walking down a dusty, deserted little street in a godforsaken village in the middle of the Karoo, bored to death by heat and the, the flies and the silence, and then to be stopped in your tracks, and I mean stopped by all of that out there. And then having barely recovered from that, to come in and find this? Don't believe me, Helen. When I saw your Mecca for the first time, I just stood there and gaped. What in God's name am I looking at? <clears throat> Camels and pyramids? No, no, not three, but dozens of wise men. Owls with old motor car headlights for eyes. Peacocks with more color and glitter than the real birds. Heat struck? Am, am I hallucinating? On my next visit, you proudly introduced me to a very stern Buddha, remember? The cement was still wet. Mm, that's right, that was my next one. A and then came the, the, the Easter Island head, the one with the top knot. Mm -hmm, correct. And you still haven't explained to me what it's doing in Mecca. A and for that matter, wise old owls and mermaids as well. Oh, well, my Mecca's got its own logic, Elsa. Even I don't properly understand it. And then, my favorite, that strange creature, half cock, half man, on the point of dropping <coughs> his trousers. Really? Well, that one is pure imagination. I don't know where he comes from. And I've told you before, Elsie, he's not dropping his trousers. He's pulling them up. <laughs> and I remain unconvinced. Take another good look at the expression on his face. That's anticipation, not satisfaction. <laughs> yes. Darkness. The darkness that nearly smothered my life in here. One night, 15 years ago. The same darkness that used to come pouring down the chimney and into the room at night when I was a little girl and frightened me. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, blow out the candle. But those dark vistas were easy to deal with. This one is worse, much worse. It's inside me, Elsa. It's got inside me at last and I can't light candles there. I never knew it would happen. I thought I was safe. I had grown up and I had all the candles I wanted. That's all a little girl could think about. When she lay there in bed at night, trying to make her prayers last as long as she could, because she was terrified of the moment when her mother would bend down to kiss her and take away the candle. To be very frank, Helen, it's your manner which now keeps people at a distance. I don't think you realize how much you've changed over the years. You're, you're not easily recognizable to others anymore as the, the person they knew 15 years ago. And then your hobby, if I can call it that, hasn't really helped matters. This is not exactly the sort of room the village ladies are used to or would feel comfortable in having afternoon tea. And as for all that out there, the less said about that, the better. <laughs> I don't harm or bother anyone, Marius. But does anybody do that to you? Yes, yes, everybody's trying to force me to leave my home. No, nobody is trying to force you, Helen, in heaven's name. Where did you get that idea from? <laughs> Miss Barlow, for the last time, what you do or don't believe is not of the remotest concern to me. Helen is. My concern is that she gets a chance to live out what is left of her life as safely and as happily as is humanly possible. I don't think that should include the danger of her being trapped in here when this house goes up in flames. What are you talking about? Her accident! The night she knocked over those candles! You... You don't know about that? When was it, Helen? Four weeks ago. Helen? I see. You didn't tell your friend about your narrow escape. I think I owe you an apology, Miss Barlow. I assumed you knew all about it. 
You owe me nothing. Just tell me what happened. I know my little mecca out there for what it really is. I had to learn how to bend rusty wire into the right shape and mix sand with cement to make my wise men and their camels. How to grind down empty beer bottles with a coffee mill to put glitter on my walls. My hands will never let me forget. They'll keep me sane. This is the best that I could do. As near as I could get to the real man.